So in probability, the first concept is uh, sample space. So you know the like possible outcomes of an event is basically the sample space. So if you cost, uh, if you toss a coin, so you can get head and head or tail. So that can be the possible <laughs> sample space. And also, like with each of the outcome, there can be a probability assigned to it, right? Like head can be like if it is a fair coin, it can be one by two, and if it's unfair by somehow, so it's it can be two by three. And uh, similarly, like event is also there. So event is actually a subset of the all the possible sample space. So. For example, uh, in our coin toss experiment, it can be had like the event that had is occurred, or if we are causing two coins, event that two uh, two heads are occurring. So, like event can be also a union of two events, like the two coin tosses are the same, or the second one is T. So the union will make three events. Um, so can you like guess like if the sample size is let's say S, so what can be the possible number of events? If the sample size is two, so how much possible events can be there? It is, yeah, four. It is two power s. Like the event can be nothing has happened, like phi, empty set, then head, tail, or head or tail. So that can also be an event. So two power s generally. Also, like probability of event would be the sum total of probability of its elements in the set that are there. So it's pretty fairly obvious there, and uh, probability of like whole sample space would be one, and probability of empty set like somehow you toss a coin and it goes up to space or what I don't know, but uh, its its probability would be zero, and uh, yeah. So these are some uh, some of the properties uh, of an event, and further if like the events are pairwise disjoint, let's say like uh, two, four, six in uh, rolling a die. Two, four, six are as such pairwise disjoint. The event of occurring them, so you can just sum those probabilities: one by six, one by six, one by six, and you can obtain one by two as the probability of getting even numbers, right? So that's fine, right? And again, like uh, conditional probability. So given an event has already occurred, how will it will affect the probability of another event? Uh, so let's say like rolling a die so given that i tell you that an even number has occurred okay so now the probability of getting two would be one by three one by uh, one by three right sorry so one by three and uh, this is basically what conditional probability does so it's like the chain rule of probability like in a, like for two variables it is there and uh, then you can look at the base rule like given that you have some probability that okay, let's say uh, for a rolling our die, uh, you know that probability of two might be four by six. Okay, it's somehow unfair bias die. So how will you incorporate that information in calculating the previous calculation that given even numbers are uh, given an even outcome has come. Okay, what is the probability that it is two? So you can use that using the base principle. We'll look into an example of this also. So yeah, here is an example. Please try it out. Like it uses uh, base principle. So a lab test has probability of 0.95 in detecting a disease when applied to a person suffering from the sad disease, and a probability of 0.10 of giving a false positive when applied to a non-sufferer. If 0.5 percent of the population are sufferers, what is the probability of the test being positive? So like, you can try that. So probability of detecting given it is a sufferer, that is, it's positive given that it is a sufferer is like 0.95. Probability it is a non-sufferer and it gives a positive result is 0.10 and probability of suffering from the disease is 0 0.005. So like can you solve that? Like are you able to solve that or is there some issue? Are you able to solve that? Um, anyone has a doubt in solving this? 
like we just have to do probability of like positive is equal to probability of positive given it is a sufferer into probability of sufferer plus probability of positive given non sufferer fine right so another example uh, parts of speech so generally in a sentence when you have a long sentence like each each word in that sentence can be categorized as a verb noun preposition so that is the part of speech like for each word there is individual part of speech so let's say like this is independent like for each word the part of speech is independent so given a set of m words like some of the hints for the solution is already given so you can get that like assume each word is independently drawn from a fixed vocabulary find the probability that a sentence of length m contains a noun given that it contains a verb so please try that you can infer that right like how probability of ak like ak the event that a sentence contains a ps ps of type k is 1 minus 1 minus pk power m like at least one word should be of type k right so so 1 2 3 if you try to sum that or otherwise like 1 minus if no one is of that particular type so like if there are some five words so and no one is of that particular type k so 1 minus pk to power 5 so 1 minus 1 power pk that sum of the word is of that particular type can you solve that also there is a property property that might come in useful that like prop a intersection b is equal to 1 minus probability of so like this is the solution so we needed to like use that formula and get that term and uh, like the like both of the tags like two of the tags not occurring for that we can say that like each of the tag didn't occur at a particular position like both of them didn't occur so pk plus pj and that would be to the power m so again uh, like now random variable so basically the output of a random experiment that you carry maybe a coin toss rolling of a die that is basically a random variable so if coin toss is there so you define like random variable what is the probability that the random variable output is heads that can be a bias coin again then 2 by 3 and if it's tail the probability is 1 by 3 and then there can be joint distribution like given two random variables x and y so we can have their joint distribution uh, generally like you can write that in the form of a table so like probability that x y both are heads is 1 by 3 and x and y are heads and tail is 1 by 3 and this is 1 by 6 and this is 1 by 6 and like actually what happens is that like first coin is unfair uh, towards heads the other coin is fair so you can obtain the marginal distribution generally like keeping a variable fixed and then summing over the next variable other variable so this will be like 2 by 3 that is the probability of x is equal to h and probability of x is equal to tails is 1 by 3 and similarly like y is the fair one and you will get that this is 1 by 2 and this is 1 by 2 uh, further like we generally tend to like like probability of x is equal to x and y is equal to y so probability of x is equal to heads and y is equal to tails we can just 
given uh, y is equal to tails can be given as like probability of heads given tails, something like that. So, and uh, further like x and y are independent if probability of x, y can be termed as probability of x into probability of y, like in the chain rule of probability A into section B. So now A and B are independent, so it doesn't matter whether we know about A or not. So for example, you toss a coin and uh, roll a die, like both are independent events, so it won't affect the other outcome if you know the outcome of one of them. Another concept is conditionally independent, like x or y may or may not be independent, but given some z condition, it can be independent. For example, like someone is reaching to office, okay, like A and B, both persons are, A and B are reaching to office. So right now it looks uh, independent, but let's say there is a C, third event that there is a traffic jam. So given there is a traffic jam and uh, A has reached late, so maybe like B, the probability of B reaching late also increases. But given that there is no traffic jam, okay, suddenly like these both events like A reaching late and B reaching late become independent. So given some condition, they can become independent. Also um, there is a concept for expected value. Uh, when you roll a die, for example, so you have like one, two, three, four, five, six, six outcomes possible. And when you do the expectation, that probability of each individual value is one by six. So you can sum over them and you will get some expected value as 3.5, right? You won't ever get a 3.5 value while rolling a die, but the expected value is 3.5. Now question and the answer is also given, so yeah. So the question is like if y is a function of x, okay, then what is the expected value of y? So again like if let's say some x takes three values minus one, zero, one with probability one by three, one by three and one by three. So its expected value would be zero. But if y is a function expected of like x square, so then apparently the value would be like one with one by three and one by three. So that would be two by three. So these are some of the things you can try. Like you can try these uh, derivations at home and like uh, like we are t so you can post the questions on Moodle if you are not able to solve them. These are generally you might have done them in the course, previous course. Also there is a concept variance. So basically like given you have many set of points from a distribution, so how far are they from the mean can be gauged by variance. The variance, high variance will tell you that many points lie far away from the mean. So again, the straightforward thing, variance okay, so expectation of x square, right, so x square So this is actually mu, so E of expectation of x plus E of x the whole square. So that will give you the that result E of x square. So this is the standard result. And further like these are the properties of variance. So like if you want to calculate the variance of sum of uh, uh, random variables, it would be the sum of variances of individual random variables, the third one. 
and uh, if they are pairwise independent with each variance is equal to sigma square so you can take the one by n out so that will be one by n square and uh, the summation of each individual random variables would be again n sigma square so that will lead to sigma square by n okay so another concept is uh, Chebyshev's uh, inequality so it just basically tells you that like the probability that a point like given a distribution you select a point from that and the probability that the point is very far away from the mean would be very less so if you just take the example of like the common normal distribution or any curve actually in fact so if this is some mean so the probability that the point would be far away from the mean would be less so if let's say sigma square is very less so the points are concentrated towards the mean so you can see that x like given take any point and subtract it from mean the value greater than alpha greater than some particular value would be with very less probability and similarly like if the points like all the points from the distribution are independent and you sample a lot of lot of them so they will tend towards the mean if you sample a lot of points so this just leads to the expected law of large numbers that the sample mean like if there is some distribution you are taking points from that if you just take 10 points the mean might not be close to it for example like coin toss okay so if you just do 10 coin tosses so it might be like six heads and four tails assuming it's a fair coin but if you take 100 coin tosses it might be 50 to 48 something like that so as you take more and more larger and it will tend towards 0.5 the true mean so yeah so this is like expectation basically what we said and again the variance I'm just summarizing that another concept is covariance like how two variables are related towards e related to each other can be caused by covariance a positive covariance like if one increases the other will increase also increase a negative covariance one one increases the other might not increase they will decrease in fact and uh, if x and y are independent so the covariance would be zero but however like covariance being zero does not mean that they are independent can you like think about that it's just like covariance is just the formula here so some of the terms like from from a distribution they, uh, like x and y somewhere they can be positively correlated somewhere they can be negative correlated so that might cancel out and give us a uh, zero value but however they are not independent so if covariance is zero so that's why like expectation is also like e x y is equal to expectation of x into expectation of y same as like independent probability so these are like other properties of covariance so covariance of x and with itself would be variance of x and uh, x plus z would be covariance of x y plus covariance of z y so these are the properties you can try them so some of the important distributions uh, Bernoulli random variable again like coin toss so head or tail with some particular probability so let's assign heads to one like some everyone does that so heads is equal to one so probability of x is equal to one is q and probability of x is equal to zero is one minus q so you can derive the expectation value so expectation would be just basically like one into q plus one minus q into zero so if like expect probability of heads is q so that would be again q similarly you can derive the variance expectation of x square here like variance is equal to expectation of so expectation of x square again there would be like 1 square into q 
plus 1 minus q, so that would be again q minus q square that would be q into 1 minus q. So yeah. Then binomial random variable. So if you have like n coin tosses, so again it can be like simpler to like choosing k places where 1 would occur and n minus k places where the probability would be like uh, tails would occur. So you can just get that this equation choosing k elements and heads for example the probability of heads is q. So at k places heads will occur with this probability given n coin tosses n c k choosing k elements and assigning its probability as q and 1 minus q is the probability for rest of the n minus k elements. And then by linearity of expectation given like uh, we know that for Bernoulli distribution the expected, expected value is q. So as like coin tosses are all independent so we can get that expectation of y would be n q. And uh, again variance, variance also linearly sums up for independent variables. So further like continuous random variables, we looked into the discrete cases right now. So continuous random variables, like you have an idea right how to get continuous random variables. So given a coin toss, can you get a continuous function from a coin toss? Can someone give an answer? Like, how can you get that? You are given a coin. Can you like approximately get a continuous distribution function? Something. Someone. Okay. Like you can toss. Let's say decide hundred coin tosses. So all the edge can be decided as one. Ninety-nine edge and last one is t can be decided as point nine nine something. And this way, like all the tails could be decided as zero, so you can like approximate a uniform distribution from a discrete distribution this way. Uh, so some of the concepts like probability density function. So continuous distributions. So uh, uh, let's give an example, like simple example. So x just goes from zero to one, and it's uniform at all the points. So probability at any given point would be zero, but the area under curve would give us the probability of that particular points if like in between you want to find. Similarly, like the other example is uh, y is uniformly distributed from zero to one by two. So here, the uniform distribution would be like this. The area should be 1. So in discrete case we tell it as mass. So again rolling a die so 1 by 6, 1 by 6, 1 by 6 for all the die outcomes. But here it would be density function and summing would give us like overall area finding the area would give us the value that we need. Another concept is cumulative distribution uh, distributive function. So what would be the like sum of all the probabilities that is less than a particular point. So you just integrate from like minus infinity to that particular point where you want like cumulative value, cumulative it's addition right. So for, for example a discrete case so 1, 2, 3, 4 so like, uh, like rolling a die so the probability would be like this it will finally reach 1, cumulative probability distribution. So why is this concept actually uh, useful, cumulative probability distribution function? Actually it's, the answer is in the slide because sometimes like it's difficult to obtain a PDF function. So given like if we are able to obtain the cumulative distribution function we can differentiate it and get the probability density function. Again uh, joint distributions 
in continuous case. So if there are two variables, the joint distribution can be given by like integrating from minus infinity to A and minus infinity to B for each of the variables respectively. And then we can individually get the probability distribution. You can marginalize after this. We, can, we will do an example on this, like after two slides. So again, like marginal distribution, as in the discrete case, apparently I rubbed that. But select a particular variable and integrate over the other variable, minus infinity to infinity. And you will get the probability density function of the first variable. Again, the similar independence concept will apply to continuous variables. Again, the conditional density function, so that is like similar to what happened in discrete case. You just marginalize over the other variable to obtain the Fy, functional density over Y. And so X given Y is, is equal to a particular value, you can obtain the density function. Conditional density function. An example is there. So this is like the last example. Please try it out. So X and Y are independent continuous random variables with some marginal density functions, same marginal density functions. The random variable Z is equal to X by Y is defined. Find a density function for Z. Please try it out. You have to use the cumulative density function concept here. So like z is equal to x by y. So z is less than a functional density if you just find that. So x by y is less than a. So probability of that would be x less than a y. So you can, like we have the condition x can vary from minus infinity to infinity while y, sorry, x can vary from minus infinity to a y and y can vary from minus infinity to infinity. So quickly, like that is what we do here. And once the functional, like cumulative function for S, z is obtained, we just differentiate it and we can obtain the the slides would be uploaded and you can go through them for the example and in case of any doubt just post it on Moodle.